Hey guys, Rapidru here, back with another StarCraft Brood War Remastered cast. And today we have a game between our Red Zerg, who is Sulky, and he is playing against a Blue Terran. I do not know who this is. <clears throat> I will try and look it up and find out and maybe put it into the description at a later point in time. Uh, but not a Smurf name that I recognize at this stage. Uh, we are on Fighting Spirit. This is a ladder game played in March of 2023. We have the Terran music playing in the background. We're having a good time. We're smiling. We're enjoying casting the best players in the world. So these guys are the sort of elite, elite, top 20 to 25 on the ladder. Um, Sulky, a participant in the ASL. We're trying to make sure that we can, for the most part, cover everybody who is participating or has had a strong history of participating in the ASL um, as well as people that are just very very high ranking on the ladder where we can find them uh, and then we bring you the game so just got done recording a JYJ versus hero game had a load of fun really enjoying recording ZVTs in general I was just checking my upload scheduling and saw oof, I was a little bit light on ZVTs I had a lot of ZVP and a couple of PVTs and I was like nope we got to keep mixing it up, man. We got to keep getting the variety in there. So if you're enjoying the new wave of what's been going through the channel, please do hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Um, and every time you stop by, if you are a regular viewer and you do enjoy the cast, please do hit that like button. It really does help with discovery, which as a relatively new creator is quite hard to do. So a 12 hatch start from Sulky, nothing unusual there. And it looks like our... Terran based on his setup is probably going to be going for um, an SK type build uh, obviously the gas timing is usually the biggest giveaway in terms of what the plan is uh, so we'll keep an eye on that as things progress okay so scouting SCV comes in here um, we'll see how strong this Terran is in terms of how long he's able to keep this guy alive his key pieces of information that he's after is obviously looking for the lair timing uh, and then checking the hatch count, right? So is it going to be a macro hatch or is it going to be a press off of two bases? His confidence from the scouting information that he's given him is that it's obviously a hatch first and therefore he can just take a command center uh, without even having a marine out. So I am noticing this pattern quite a bit. Uh, when the Terran scouts like overpool, they'll make sure they have at least a few marines and maybe even a bunker before they expand. But if they scout that it is hatch first, then they will do a one, two, or in this case, a zero marine uh, command center. And it's just the timing of the depot, right? So whether they build the depot before this command center or after, um, he's chosen to actually cut his CVs for a little while uh, to be able to make room for his command center. And he's going to let his, maybe his command center give him supply. Um, or no, he's just finished that depot here on the low ground. Okay. So back now on his production, getting his gas getting another rack so this just looks like a two racks academy um this will certainly give terran some units because of the timing of his command center um so as zerg you need to have a very good feel for if you're going to need to throw down some sunkins uh, because it's also a short rush distance right so it's close spawns um and that certainly will force the zerg to be a bit more vigilant so why do we all like sulky um you know number one he streams so we get to watch how he plays and how he thinks but he's just renowned to be a very creative fun and quite aggressive zerg been on the scene for quite a long time i've done games of his against bisu from years and years ago and for him to still be very active in 2023 is obviously great for everybody um i also realized there are a lot of really good zergs um, in terms of the numbers and the popular names most of them tend to be zergs um both young and legends you obviously you've got your jadongs and your heroes that are your legends uh, and then you've got your Somars, who are your sort of new kids on the block that are just setting setting the world ablaze, man. So the Zerg guys are popular. Uh, me being a Protoss main, I love watching people like Snow. But I'd love to know who your favorite players are and why. I mean, I think Light is also a favorite of everybody's. Um, so, so yeah, man, if you can, let me know in the comments who your favorite players are and why. I would just love to, I would love to read about that. Okay, so some speedlings coming in. Interesting to see that it is a lair and it is a spire, but we did get metabolic boost. So Sulky obviously deciding he just wants to put some pressure on here. This Terran not building a bunker and not feeling the need. I think that the pathing that this um, deeper creates gives him enough comfort. He's already got medics out. Uh, this is two racks. 
Academy. He's getting his eBay in play. He's got some fire bats to repel the links. He knows that the muters won't be as fast as they otherwise could have been. Just because of the amount of links that Sulky has chosen to make here in the early game. Um, a counter attack could also be an opportunity here. But he's got a lot of links. So the Terry must be careful if his counter attack. If he moves out and he doesn't have enough units on the field. This is a pure two hatch build. So this is going to be two hatch meter. There's no natural hatch uh, or macro hatch. I keep getting that term messed up. It's not natural hatch rabbit. It's macro hatch. The hatchery that they build in the main to connect the two. Well done. Um, for some reason, I've kept stuffing that expression up. So I like this little pot of links here. It does. I think Sulky is deliberately showing this number only to maybe have this Terran think, you know what would be a good idea for me to do? Would be to move out across the map here and to come here and then boop, you get surrounded by the remaining lings and any muters that come out. So I think he's baiting, but I think this Terran is a little bit too smart to fall for it. And um, yeah, let's see what we get here. Okay, so here come our muters. And there are only one turret here at the moment, so Sulky could get some damage, although he's got quite a few. He's obviously giving the responsibility of fending off these meters predominantly to his units, which is good. The thing is, there could be a little bit of a sandwich here. I just need to check that. So he is giving the responsibility mainly to his actual bio units to protect. I'm feeling a sandwich, though. I'm feeling Muters pulling the bio into the main and then the Lynx coming in. So it does dive on the bunker here. The, the, the Marines are a little bit out of position. So the bunker falls down really, really quickly. Yes, there's a fire bit in there. He does pull away. So not a full commitment from Sulky. I think very methodical from him now. Cancels the bunker this time. Besides, that's not a good plan. These Muters could probably take down this Depot, which is going to be painful. Terran will get supply blocked by that. Does get it and then does pull away. So patient aggression from Sulky. Certainly a term that I'm enjoying using because it is honestly the best way of describing these pro players. They are patient, they are aggressive, and it is so effective in the way that it makes them win games that uh, players of lesser caliber would lose because they throw away their units instead of just picking, getting damage, and keeping their units mostly alive. So, Peter Erasman, he's got that sweet number. You see he one shots an SCV and moves out of there. Probably thinks this is a little bit too strong. A fourth turret coming in here and these two at the back. I mean, this is really well fortified. Gets the SCV though for free because of just incredibly good placement and understanding of where he could take hits and wouldn't take hits in terms of the turret range. Um, now just chilling at the back here. Fighting Spirit famous for these little spots to harass from. Also, these are very painful for Volta drops in PVTs, which I have experienced many, many times to my great delight. Okay, so the Lings are just kind of just chilling on the bridge here. Mainly just to keep an eye on any moveouts. Uh, Sulky has got so much map control, man. Just really, really dominating this game. Uh, it's gone up to Queen's Nest off of only two hatches. Um, that's probably the thing that I've been a little bit surprised to see here. Is this progression to basically up to Hive Tech. Uh, with very, very little in by way of hatcheries. So it does move his lings away here. The Terrans decided, you know what? I'm tired of you and your harassment. Um, I've got plenty of turrets. So I'm not scared of your computers anymore. So I'm going to move out and see what have you got to protect you at home. And the answer is some mutalisks, a queen's nest, and what's soon to be a sunken colony. So Solky could take a bit of damage here. Uh, although... His Muters and his Muter Micro is so strong that he's certainly going to be able to contain the damage. Uh, did buy himself some time for the Sunken to come up. There it is. Uh, there is a couple of Muters here as well, and there are a couple of Lings reinforcements. So it's pretty much just Ling Muters still from Sulky, although uh, that's up time. I'm expecting the Hive to be up. So does this constitute Crazy Zerg? Will you skip Hydra Den entirely? No, because there is the Hydra Den. I don't see any Lurker though, Lurker Aspect. The Hydra Den is up. But I, and I, now I see Hydras for the first time. Dives on the ball. He, he knew he had enough. He took the flank. All the meters are down. That move from our Terran uh, did not go well. And Sulky here is in a huge lead. He's got so much map control. He doesn't need to throw his units away. He could just easily camp out the front door here of the Terran. And macro up behind this without any concerns at all. In fact, that is what this drone I think is here for. Is for him to take his third. Um, and then he can probably drone up. There we go. He spins him around and he is ready to roll. So third hatch coming in. 
I expect we'll see a few drones going to the production tab soon. Uh, probably even a lurker contain could be on the menu. I see this egg morphing in here. A lovely line of lurkers like this uh, is going to make life very, very painful for the Terran. He's going to be forced to SK Terran his way out of there. Uh, let's have a look at his tech tree and how far he would be from doing that. So only the one port out at the moment. The science facility is landed. Um, I don't see a radiate in the production tab as of yet. It's probably on the way in the not too distant future. Um, the first science vessel is on its way. Uh, so that is obviously going to be his solution to get out of what I've just expected. To, we will get a lovely little lurker containment. All right. So our hive is up. Our defiler mound is incoming. So this could just well be defilers uh, throwing up some dark swarm right here and making our Terran's life very painful. It does have a tank here and uh, still Sulky using his very, very high APM to his advantage to pick up SCVs, to be a nuisance, to just constantly be in the face of this Terran. It is very, very painful if you are a Terran fan. Of course, if you're a Zerg fan, you are having an absolute blast. All right, so we're saturating our third he has moved his drone count up to 29 looks like he's going to be adding a few more drones um overlord spread here is beautiful he's got absolute vision on the map uh in the event that our Terran does try and move anywhere um doesn't have it does i was gonna say he doesn't have vision here but he's just moving an overlord in to make sure that our Terran doesn't try and sneak something funny So here they do move forward. The lurkers, though, have to probably back away because of the power of the tank. So the solution from our Terran to the lurker contain is some tanks. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see. There we go. Siege mode's coming in. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit of a tank vessel um, bio combination. The challenge for Terran of this is it's very gas intensive to be able to afford the vessels and the tanks. So you'll see you'll probably have quite a low vessel count. Um, and then, of course, if Sulky has muters, because he's kept his muters alive, um, there is always an opportunity to pick off a tank uh, from a certain angle, especially if the lings are in play, to soak up damage from the marines. Looks like this uh, Terran is actually going to press this third base of Sulky's. What do we have here? Uh, we have some lurkers on the high ground, but we have tanks that are sieged up on the low ground. I don't know what... The solution from Sulky would be, although they've sieged up in range of the sunk, and so he's going to lose one of his tanks there. That's a little bit unfortunate. Throws up the Dark Swarm. The Defiler usually solves most Zerg problems, as it turns out. A um, couple more Lurkers are here. A couple more Defilers are out on the field. So it's basically Ling, Lurker, Defiler with some Muta support. Um, the Lurkers are under there. They are going to be very hard to break. So changing his angle here. Could probably get some shots off. There we go. He's going to be able to knock the Sunken down. Unbelievable range. The Sunken was hitting Marines over here. That is insane. Okay, so the Extractor is going to go down. Yes, another Dark Swarm has come in. The tanks are going to be able to retreat from this. One does take a bit of damage, but gets out of dodge quite nicely. The Science Vessel is doing a lot of valuable work because he can spot these Lurkers under the Dark Swarm. I think this is one of the things that makes it pretty hard to play Zerg. Behind all of this hard work that Sulky's having to do to fend off his Terran friend, he's still harassing with his muters non-stop. Some vultures have entered the fray here, so that's quite interesting. Couple of mines, so a bit of a mech switch from our Terran, deciding he's not too interested. Look, he's got his... He's building more racks, but he's uh, been pumping non-stop units out of what's basically just one factory. Has irradiated the remaining muters here, so I don't know if Sulky's... Um, surrendered a lot of advantage here but our Terran has certainly done a very very impressive job in clawing his way back into this game uh, with some very very patient and methodical um, leapfrogging getting into this third base uh, nullifying the effectiveness of Sulky's muters of which he still has plenty by the way um, and being able to fend off the constant muters harassment that he was getting perhaps Sulky's going to jump back onto this main base it's difficult to say at this stage, but keeping those beaters alive is going to be important because I think we are gearing up for a very, very big engagement very soon. Suddenly, the Lings are soaking up some mine damage. That's going to be a dead overlord. Uh, painful, but never the end of the world. So fire bats, science vessels, marines. Uh, no, still a tank in production, so constantly at least producing out of this factory the entire time. Uh, but 
predominantly still going with a bio this is one of the more interesting hybrid comps you'll see you've got some vessel you've got some fire bat you've got some marine medic you've got some tank you've got some volta you've got mines um so certainly variety this vessel though has run a bit too far ahead and he's gone that's so 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 important especially if you want to try and break a zerg on the high ground with defila support those vessels become the absolute key and that's the challenge of trying to sustain constant production out of your factory and have vessels it's very very difficult to do both again this constant harassment there lovely radiate there not much of a split here unfortunately so he's going to lose himself okay he did or i think he managed to save himself at least five of his muters there the harassment though questionable if it was beneficial or not the irradiates certainly have thinned those numbers there's still a lot of units here as well this terran is suddenly starting to look very very threatening and the game that i thought sulky had like in the bag uh, i'm now starting to feel a bit concerned for him because this terran's numbers is getting really 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 scary um that being said it isn't obvious or clear how exactly he breaks this with the defiler support um but it seems to certainly be the plan okay so up come the vultures and down go the vultures okay so confirmation of what's happening there there are some hydra lurkers lings muters all in the equation with the defilers constantly being a presence so i think that was the last of the mines didn't make a lot of vultures uh, and the mines now have basically been cleared off another overlord got picked off so again temporarily supply blocked so he's under the dark swarm he's seeming seeming to deliberately add some hydras now to the composition as well i think that's probably to try and pick off some of the tanks uh and the vessels so an interesting mix here although they've now been all converted into lurkers although this might just be um a total transition into hydra lurker these muters though have not disappeared and the advantage that they're giving sulky the entire time is beautiful map vision so what sort of money do we have here we have a oh we're getting very close to getting mined out i think this is becoming a big risk for our terran our zerg's got plenty of cash no real concerns about running out of money anytime soon so we're going to try and pressure here we've got a lot of lurkers that have popped in under the dark swarm and a few more that have moved forward so just leapfrogging constantly these are going to basically burrow right on top of these tanks one tank goes down no how on earth okay so now the hydra is basically following up are able to pick off a couple of tanks a stray vessel here is going to get that vessel for free as i said the hydras are pretty useful because they can pick off vessels that stray a little bit further forward or backwards um a couple of tanks here though meanwhile a push from the terran on the main only hydras and a few defilers here where are the lurkers where's the support a nice plague though but the fire bats don't give a crap about your dark swarm they're going to come in here and kill these defilers how is this defiler not dead okay he's alive now okay so some reinforcing hydras have pulled across the map to pick off the remaining bio which should be pretty easy for them to do because they've been plagued and the lurkers are backing up a little bit from the tanks but it is just action from all angles here today so plenty of vessels still here tanks still being very very useful hydra's picking off the remaining units 129 plays 132 you probably could not get closer at this stage the problem for the terran though is he needs a third and if azur can deny the third he's probably going to be able to pull this one out the fire a nice big flank from all angles here the scourge have to get targeted down the hydras though are just basically turning into corpses although the lurkers do burrow under the dark swarm so another opportunity for lurkers to put some pressure on you he's probably going to get at least one tank from that but it is just so close very very even trades constant fighting great skill here from both players i must say i've been massively impressed with the composure and the micro and the methodical approaches from both players so another vessel goes down he's counted to about five now the hydras have done pretty good work i think adding them to the comp was a good call suddenly there's only three tanks left and now we have two tanks left underneath the dark swarm difficult for the tanks to do much these lurkers are going to come and burrow in here under the dark swarm as well and i think that's basically going to pin these marines back here as well 120 plays 122 it's getting very very close the other units that are free on out on the map are only bio marine medic um and i don't exactly know what he intends to do with those uh probably just going to try and storm on the natural here there isn't really much to protect him here so here they come these units are just rallying they're not even fighting the defilers are here but they're not going to be able to do much so 
The Marines are going to burst in the front of here and play against one sunken. However, here come the Muras that have been kept alive all game. We didn't really see them feature much for a while, but he never ever let them die. Yes, he didn't suicide them. He didn't waste them. He just kept them for the event that he needed to do something like this, which was a very, very fast tidy up of the counter harassment. And so now I can continuously advance on this position. This is basically just a containment strategy to deny the opportunity for our Terran to hold his expansion, which he has gotten up. I missed that in all the action. But the question will really be, one, does Sulky know about this? And two, when does he press on this position? Because there is absolutely nothing more critical for this Terran to do than to be able to maintain this third base. So he's setting up so that it can't be flanked from this side. But doesn't really have anything. This ramp is wide open. He hasn't built a depot wall. He hasn't built anything. Solky doesn't seem to care though. Just moving in with the units he does have. Underneath the Dark Swarm. Some Ling's getting on top of him. On top of the tanks. More Hydra's moving forward. I just don't think there's enough Terran here. A very methodical game from Solky. Just constantly picking, 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 picking. So 100 plays 82. Are we going to see some lings or hydras approach this side i'm just waiting for this to happen so here we go here's the ramp this is the key moment for the terran he's quietly hoping that sulky doesn't approach from this angle but we all know that he was always going to so he's jumping on top of the scvs it's gonna have to bring some units across to clean all of this up lurker gets in underneath the dark swarm now the marine medics have got to get up their own high ground here so many scvs are dying he's down to about 34 the lings are all over the show a Terran cannot vacate his main because if he does, then Sulky's just going to storm here. So this leaves the space, which he's actually done a beautiful plague as well. Um, he does manage to keep the command center alive, but there's a lurker here that is going to be painfully difficult to dislodge. Okay, so the Dark Swarm does come down. A Terran player just taps out. He doesn't have enough to hold the relentless pressure on the natural and to reinforce his only mining base. A very, very strong game from both players i thought sulky took a commanding lead in the beginning and yet our terran was able to fight back and look really really threatening for quite some time the only reason he couldn't pull this one off is he could not secure a third base which just meant he ran out of gas uh, sulky was very very patient and methodical and his muta play was absolutely excellent i'm rabbit Roo. if you enjoy games like this please do subscribe to the channel for many more until next time ciao for now